All right. So I want to check this live on YouTube as well. And most importantly, let me share the documents that we have to. All right, so um, we'll be going live in the next five minutes. Uh, we're just giving it time for a couple more people to join in and we'll get started. Please note that this is a webinar and uh, we're also going live on both YouTube and TikTok. So if you'd like to follow up on any of those channels, please go right ahead. Okay, so guys, um, let's just give it a few more minutes for a couple more people to join in. Uh, exactly seven minutes past, we'll be getting started. With whoever is there, whoever is not, we'll catch up with us a little bit later. Just for more context, I'm holding both a webinar and a live uh, live stream, both on TikTok and YouTube. So if you'd like to follow up um, on YouTube, we are available. And if you'd like to follow up on TikTok, we are available. Uh, similarly, for those that are here for the webinar, uh, feel free to catch up and ask any questions at any point in time. Should be in position to jump right in and help you. Okay, so um, just as an update, we're getting started in exactly one minute. So um, if you'd like to follow up from uh, YouTube or TikTok or the webinar itself, uh, in exactly one minute, we'll be getting started. Okay, so guys, yeah, let's get started. So welcome to my channel. And uh, in today's live slash webinar, we'll be talking about how to acquire B2B leads for your business. Uh, the webinar is going to take roughly around 30 minutes, but anytime you would like to follow up, this video is going to be updated on our YouTube channel so you can catch up a little bit later on if you're interested. Um, just as a heads up, 
um, we've gone live on TikTok and the webinar and on our YouTube as well. So regardless of the platform, you'll be in position to follow up and get to understand how do you acquire B2B leads for your business. So yeah, let's dive straight right in. Um, yes, uh, just as an introduction, my name is Kenneth Intende. Um, I'm the CEO of Monkey Pesa, and I love sales. I'm an author of two fully blown sales courses that if you want to catch up on and learn sales, it would be quite handy for you. And uh, over the past six months, I have trained over 300 businesses on sales. I tend to want to focus exclusively on how do you scale sales, whereas most people tend to want to focus on how do you get sales to survive. Yes, I know survival comes first, but right from inception of your business, I tend to structure on how do you structure your business right so that you're able to not only survive, but also scale. Because what is required while selling to survive is a whole lot different from what is required to sell to scale. The two are absolutely different things. There's a reason as to why most businesses in Africa and across the world tend to get just enough sales to survive. It's mostly because they don't have the skills that they need to get their business to the next level, to the next 200, to the next 300 customers. And that's what I tend to help businesses with. How do you use the internet to scale and set up the right structures that you need to empower you get the best results as a business? So yes, um, and this webinar is hosted, is uh, supported by Monkey Pesa. Monkey Pesa is an all-in-one software for sales, marketing, and customer support. So um, if you need a tool, a CRM tool that you can use for your business to help you track sales, how many sales are in the pipeline, how long are my sales cycles taking, how do I prospect on a ton of those things to do with improving the sales of your organization, um, feel free to check that out. But there'll be more on this a little bit later. Yes, um, now let's dive straight right in. Um, OK. So um, usually, before we dive into getting to understand how to acquire leads for your business, I tend to want to get you to understand this one thing, the metrics behind sales. Most people tend to just want to focus on the final number. I need 20 sales from you, but you understanding that you need 20 sales is just a quarter of the picture. It's important you understand a couple of the other metrics because they are what guide you to understand how much work you need to do at the end of the day. Just to give you context, so for example, you want 50 sales within this month and you're in the world of B2B sales. To get, to get uh, 50 sales, it's not straightforward that you're just going to jump today and talk to 50 people and and uh, get the 50 cells. The first thing you need to understand is, number one, how many leads do I need to acquire? To get 50, you will need, to get 50 cells, you will need to acquire about 1,000 leads. And of those 1,000 leads, they are going, you're going to need to qualify. I know, yes, I have acquired 1,000 leads, but how many of these leads are quality leads? How many of them fit our ideal customer profile? How many of them, um literally the kinds of customers that we want to sell to at this given point in time so first get to understand okay number one how many leads do i need number two how many qualified leads do i need and number three of these qualified leads you're going to need to understand that you're only going to be able to close a percentage of the qualified leads usually that percentage tends to be anywhere between uh three to 20% depending on the kind of business. So hypothetically, if you wanted to get 50 cells, you need to understand that to get 50, 50 cells, you're going to need to get a ton more leads. So it's why you need to know this beforehand is because for you, sometimes you don't understand how much work you need to do to achieve the targets that you want. So it's important that before you even get started with any of this, get to understand how many leads do I need to acquire and uh, get your team ready and in the mindset of we are going to need this much work, we're going to need this number of people in order to be able to achieve the targets that we need at the end of the day. 
All right, so um, if you already have that in check, uh, you could as well proceed. We're going to the next section. But if you don't understand how to, the mathematics behind cells, then you could check out one of the videos that we have on our YouTube channel. I'll just share that with you so that you, you're able to also pick up and know what should I be tracking, what should I be tracking, what's important, what are the leading metrics, what are the lagging metrics. And it just gives you a lot, a ton more context on what exactly you need to do. So yes, um, let's proceed. Now let's dive straight into the leads acquisition. Now, when you're acquiring leads, there are two channels that are used to acquire leads. There is what they call inbound leads acquisition, and there is what they call outbound leads acquisition. Now, the purpose of this webinar or this live is I'm just going to dig, dig straight deep to the ones that work the best. Just to give you context, I have over 10 years of sales experience. I've tested out so many channels. And in this video, I'm just going to be focusing exclusively on what has worked, especially in the context of B2B. Meaning if you're a business that's selling to other businesses, this is what tends to work better. Here's what converts better. So yeah, now let's start with uh, what they call inbound. For those that don't already know, inbound means I have done this thing. And because I have done this thing, it has helped me attract, attract the people that I need. So this could be something like, say, for example, I have placed ads. Once you place ads and you tell Facebook that, you know what, I need you to bring me 20 new messages every day. That is something you've done, which is the ads, and it is bringing you leads. Uh, this could as well be something like hosting a webinar. I usually host webinars every other week, and every webinar tends to bring on average 10 to uh, 20 people. So... Um, by me doing this every week it means by the time the month ends i have acquired 80 leads so inbound is just about how do i get the people to come to me as opposed to how do i go out to get the people so under these channels there are honestly about three channels that work effectively globally number one they are what they call webinars 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 are usually held uh guys just give me a second just a minute. All right. Okay, now uh, just give me a second, please. All right, uh, let's uh, let's go right ahead. Okay, so um, the first channel I was trying to elaborate is what they call the webinars. Uh, webinars are quite effective, actually. As a standard, they tend to bring the best quality leads. Usually, webinars are talks like these ones, where you're hosting and talking about a sensible topic. If you're in the world of say sales, you can hold a webinar on how how do you generate more leads and the people that come to attend such webinars are mostly interested in such stuff. I mean, I'm not going to hold that webinar on tax and how to cut down on my taxes if I'm not interested in cutting down my taxes. Or, so for example, you're into fish farming and you're presenting a webinar on how do you improve your skills of uh, fish farming. By the time you host a webinar, usually the people that come for such webinars tend to be a tan qualified. They I would say the word I could use is they tend to be a lot more boring. And if you can get 10, 20, or 30 people to come and attend those webinars, it means they're already pre-qualified. They're typically interested in what you're doing. So they are quite an amazing tool to help you acquire more leads for your business. So that is platform number one. Now, the second channel you could use that is honestly a ton effective is using LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I'm not talking of LinkedIn Premium, I'm meaning ordinary LinkedIn. It's a very powerful tool for B2B leads acquisition. Uh, for those that are attending the webinar, I'm actually going to dive deep and just show you how exactly you do this. 
and say for example you're looking for all country managers or sales managers or sales reps and this is who you wanted to talk to i'm just going to show you how exactly would you use linkedin as a tool whether you're on the premium account or whether you're the free account here is how you can actually do this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to share um on my screen uh, if you would like to follow up you could as well just go check out my youtube channel because i can't present in all places at the same time so that you can view in from there but for now let me just share my screen uh, whoever is uh, seeing this please leave me a thumbs up so we can pick it up from there so yes uh, in a nutshell here is how you would go about using linkedin now like I said, this webinar is targeted B2B sales reps. Now, if you're in the world of B2B, you tend to be selling to specific industries. As an example, I might be... Let me use myself as an example. I'm, I'm in the world of sales and marketing, and we provide a CRM software that companies use for their sales and marketing processes. So how I would logically do this is step number one, I would go to LinkedIn, as you can see. And the first thing I would do is I would just search this field called sales managers, meaning I want the list of all the sales managers in say Kenya or Nigeria or Ghana or Uganda, whatever country it is, I first search for the phrase sales manager. Now from looking for sales managers step number two um of course select people so that it filters out and brings me just the people and most importantly i i use all the filters all these filters i could say people who are my connections then i say as an example people who are best in uganda let me use uganda as an example i could even choose that i want you to bring me the sales manager of this specific company who has been in sales uh, for this specific company uh, for those that are following in on the webinar i'm actually showing this live of how exactly would you do this uh, step number two, you, step number three, you could even choose that you know what, and me, I want sales managers, but only people who are interrelated to this given industry. As an example, software development. As an example, media sales people in the media space or sales people in the farming space. It's it's really upon what you're looking for. Uh, in this context, uh, for this context, let me just say, I just want sales managers um, of all types of organizations. So the moment I click. Uh, show results linkedin would bring me a field of do you know what here is a ton of all the sales managers for those that don't know webinar you can see it showing me so and so is from bank of africa so and so is from village energy so and so yeah, it kind of just brings me a ton of all these sales managers i'm just using this as an example given that i will usually sell to sales managers but this can be customized really to any industry if you sell your product and it's a financial product it might make a lot of sense to look for cfos to look for accountants to look for um financial managers or whatever company so you could as well filter it in exactly the same way literally have a filter and say that do not i want all the finance managers from these kinds of companies uh, in this location and linkedin would bring you a list of every single possible person now after this list has been brought in step number two is now all you have to do is just drop them a message uh, as you can see there are over 16 pages of sales managers and i would uh, i would say just from my own connections alone there are hundreds uh, if not thousands of sales managers so your job becomes now let me keep dropping each and every one of them a message each and every one of them a message with our manifesto telling them do not you know what here's what we do here is why i think it's important to you and this is what i believe overall so please uh, if you want to respond um go ahead and reach out this is my phone number this is how now by doing this at a large enough scale you tend to create a whole lot more opportunity than in a scenario where you do not do it at all as an example just my first connections alone of sales managers are over 500 so if i sent all these 500 managers messages i'm not saying all of them are going to respond but of the 500 i'm going to get um i'm going to get some 50 that give me some kind of feedback now those are 50 leads that have been acquired and of those 50, I still know I'm not going to convert all of them, 
but I will still keep engaging them slowly by slowly over time so that as instead of just the 50, I probably push that number to 100, 100 that have used our product before I cross over to that next country. And the beauty about this is you're not locked by geography, meaning when you want to sell to Kenyans, you can. When you want to sell to people in DRC, you can. When you want to sell to Nigerians, you can. It's just a matter of how well you use the filtering system of LinkedIn, even for free. It really works. It it genuinely works. Now, um, if you have a bit of a budget on you, um, the second portal you could use still under LinkedIn is what they call the sales navigator. Sales navigator costs about seventy-nine dollars. I previously had a subscription on this. I could as well show you that. Yes, um, Sales Navigator just does this filtering much better. And uh, in some scenarios, if you don't have a strong enough LinkedIn account, it's not going to allow to give you too many contacts at a go on the system intentionally. So this is where Sales Navigator comes in. Uh, for those that are following the webinar, this is how exactly you can do it. The beauty about Sales Navigator is you can look for any company. As an example, if I searched for Monkey Pesa right now, uh, number one, it's going to bring me uh, people who are who work within Monkey Pesa. So you're able to not only save that contact for later, but uh, you're able to connect with these people and you're still able to select any of the companies and still DM the owners or the managers or the CEOs of those companies. And it works quite effectively. So platform number one was LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is a bit restrictive. So if you have a bit of a budget, I would recommend you pay the $79 a month for the sales navigator. It will give you a ton more reach, a ton more reach. The trick about these platforms, however, is do it at scale don't reach one two three four people and feel like you've done a good enough job if you can message 50 people message 100 people in a day and it's only at scale that you tend to get a lot more value so that is how you use uh, linkedin as a tool um now the third inbound channel that honestly works uh, that really 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 works is what we call the linkedin ads I haven't talked about Facebook ads. I haven't talked about Google ads yet, but I've started with LinkedIn ads. Why I love LinkedIn ads is you have the option of specifying that, you know what, this is what I'm selling, but I want you to show this advert exclusively to the manager of Coke, the manager of Pepsi, the manager of Airtel, the manager of this company, the manager of that company. Now, because of that filtering, you tend to have a lot, a much better conversion if the people you're advertising to are using LinkedIn as a platform. So the beauty about LinkedIn ads is that they allow you to specify so much that if you wanted to sell to people in, say, this given industry alone, you had the leeway to advertise exclusively to those people alone. So that's why it's a bit a bit more expensive. So the main reason they charge a bit more than every other advertising platform is because of that specificity. It's direct to the point. So it's a, it's honestly quite reliable. So in order to access uh, LinkedIn ads, you would literally go back into your LinkedIn, then uh, select business, this drop down, and select advertise for those of you that are following up on the webinar. Now, once you select advertise, make sure you set up your communities right, set up who you're trying to reach, be as specific as possible, because the more specific you are, the more specific you are, the, the better the value that the LinkedIn ads give you. So if you have a bit of a budget on you and you want to do a bit of inbound, then LinkedIn would be place number one for you to run ads. Now, the second channel to, to run ads on is Google. Google comes secondary to LinkedIn. like i said because of the specificity but uh it has a lot more reach than linkedin does now please expect that these first two platforms both linkedin ads and facebook ads tend to be a bit more expensive so uh, get to understand that you know what yes i'm going to advertise on these channels but it's going to cost me a bit of money so those ones come in ideal when you have a bit of a budget on you so yes um if you're inside here make sure you can uh, place ads create an account and literally follow the steps the most important segment is specifying who you're trying to target same thing applies to google 
if possible, get as specific as possible and tell them, you know what, uh, this is what exactly I want. These are the industries I want. If possible, give it examples of customers that have purchased from you. The same thing applies to Facebook ads. They, they are not as effective when it comes to B2B ads. But if you have an existent list of a thousand people plus, you could use that list, import it into Facebook so that you tell Facebook that now, I want you to advertise to people who have, who are similar to these given contacts I have given you, maybe by one or two percent. That is the only way you get. Don't make a mistake of just going to Facebook and saying, I want to run a ton of ads and say, um, on these ads, I, all I want is reach everyone in Nigeria or reach everyone in Ghana or reach everyone in Uganda. You won't get as much value as you would if you specified that here is what exactly I need. Here is the kind of person I want from you. And it's that specificity that drives a lot more value than the generalization. So yeah, for inbound, those are honestly the only few techniques that work. Number one, you have to leverage the webinars. Number two, you have to leverage ads, but ads exclusively if you have uh, if you have the budget for them. And uh, just to catch catch you up, and number three. Um, the LinkedIn, ordinary LinkedIn and ordinary uh, uh, Google ads, they tend to be a lot more effective. Don't do not do too much. Don't do too much uh, when it comes. Don't over diversify yourself because I've tried everything else. Reddit, if you're in the African region, uh, not so effective. I've tried Pinterest, good organically, but paid not so much. They have a lot more reach in the US. If you're in the other parts of the world, I would recommend that. But for this, given that we're focusing exclusively on people in the African region, to be honest, it tends to be a whole lot more effective. Just keep them small. Have your webinar once a week, it will bring you 10, 20 people. And out of those 20 people, you would be able to convert because the quality of leads would be much better. Then use LinkedIn, just like I have showed you how, and you'd be able to bring out a lot uh, a lot of value and don't forget the linkedin ads if you have money for advertising it's linkedin number one then number two is the google ads then uh, finally number three is uh, number three is facebook if you have a bit of an extra budget yes um now in the scenario that you don't have a budget uh these are the options that you have um outbound tends to be more effective Truth be told, I've done both inbound and outbound. Now, inbound works well when you're targeting mid-sized companies, mid-sized companies and small companies. But when it comes to the large corporations, outbound always beats. You're going to have a scenario whereby if someone sought out to reach 50 people a day, and you tried to lure 50 people a day, the cost it would cost you to lure 50 people to you would be a whole lot more than what this guy who is going out to reach 50 people is going to be, if at least they know where to get the leads. Now, in this specific section, I'm just going to be delving on exactly that. What is outbound? Outbound means in this scenario, you're going out to get the people instead of doing things to bring these people in. Now, under outbound, there are usually three platforms I'm going to recommend. If you're in the African region, these are the best three platforms that you're going to do. Um, number one is you're going to use Google. Specifically, Google Maps. <laughs> uh, under this, um, just for those who are attending the webinar, let me just show you exactly how that would work out. Let me share my entire screen. You can uh, follow up from there. The first thing you do is go literally to your Google search bar and uh, type. I'm looking, say, for example, for SACOs in Uganda. SACOs are financial institutions for those that don't know them. SACOs in Uganda. Now, what this does is if you go to the map section, as you can see right here, and click to more, under that given search, number one, it's going to bring you a list of all the possible SACOs in the country. Number two, just below the list of those those given circles, there is going to be a phone number. And when it comes to smaller organizations, um, especially the ones that have less than 10, 20 employees, 
most of the time you're going to find that the number that you find right here, as you can see, this this is one of the numbers, is in most scenarios going to be the number of the owner because they usually set up these ads accounts, I mean these Google accounts much earlier in the business. So you tend to get more direct access, but this only applies when you're dealing with smaller organizations. Just search the industry as an example. I'm searching for circles in Uganda. Oh, I'm searching for NGOs in Nigeria. It's going to bring you a list of all the NGOs. And under there, as long as you cross over to the Google Maps section, it will just keep bringing you that. Do you know what? This is their website. This is their number. This is their website. This is their number. So in just one single day, you're able to actually sit and number one, get the list of who are the people in this given industry. Number two, what are the phone numbers? Literally, in just one day, you can get 5,000 contacts. Now the owners comes back to you that now I have got 5,000 different numbers. Let me filter out who are the smaller organizations who has less ratings. Those are the ones I'm going to call first and go ahead and make several phone calls. As you can see, this is a phone number. As you can see, this is, for those in Uganda, this is an Airtel number. You can literally call directly. And in many scenarios, you're going to get direct to the owner and then pitch whatever you have to say. It tends to be a honestly a ton more effective than you trying to pass the inbound channel and try to get in that will cost a whole lot more than me just getting a phone number and reach out now the trick about this is what you need to understand is you're going to have to do a lot more volume because in order for you to get 10 cells as an example you're going to need to have talked to 100 people now, what that is going to a lot that is going to show is there are going to be so many people that tend to reject you. Sometimes you're going to call someone and they are not hearing. Sometimes you're going to call someone, they are not in the country. Sometimes they're going to call someone, they are busy. So um understand that. You know what? I I yes, I'm going to do this, but I should expect a whole lot more noise because number one, the people don't know me. I'm introducing myself for the first time and I'm introducing my product as well. Eh? for the first time so because of that newness i should expect more people to say no now what your target should be when you're doing such outbound calls especially the ones through google as a platform is go right ahead make these phone calls the first thing you do is give a call to action a request for a meeting because there is no single person no single decision maker that is going to wake up one day and you sell to them this thing and they say yes yes sell it to me so ask for a meeting, whether online, whether in person, and meet the person, because that is when you get to understand if they have a problem, if they don't have a problem, if this is a solution that could possibly work for them, and let that be your call to action. So whoever accepts a meeting with you, whoever accepts a meeting with you, um, put them as a qualified lead, because during that initial phone call, that trick is get try and help this person understand what the problem is and ask them if they have the possible problem is. As an example for our case scenario, we tend to have two possible problems. We portray out there, do you want to increase your sales or do you have tools to help track the effectiveness of what your sales team is doing for the larger corporations? So in right from that initial conversation, don't focus on telling them about what you do, but rather focus on telling, asking them if they have this possible problem and then present the solution a bit where you extend it and say, can we rather have a phone call and talk in person about this and that and this and that. It tends to drive a lot more effectiveness than, than you just going to pitch whatever product it is that you want. So yes, um, now the second portal, if you have a bit of money, um, Monkey Pesa has quite an extensive database. We have uh, Africa's largest database of contacts, B2B business contacts. Ideally, we have what they call a prospecting tool. And in that prospecting tool, you can log right in. And this is the test environment, but you can log right in and go to the prospecting. And under prospecting, all you have to do is look for whatever company you would like. And when you search for that company, it brings you number one. OK, who are the decision makers within that company? It brings their numbers, their emails, whatever details um, to do with them. And most importantly, it brings you companies that are similar to that company which you have just searched in terms of revenue, in terms of team, in terms of location. So if you have a bit of money to spend every month, it would get quite helpful. Like I said, the database is quite extensive. It's uh, 
over 1.8 million records of African businesses, meaning if you wanted to get closer to people faster, this would be the best place because Google, because the data is open and free and free for all, it tends to have, uh, should I say, data of small business owners, whereas you might want to sell to larger corporations. Now, to get access to their numbers, you may need a tool like the Monkey Pesa prospecting tool that allows you to literally search in and say, who is this? What do they, who are they, who are similar companies? And because the data is already curated and made available, it's a much easier place for, if you have a team of say four or five people and you want all these four or five people to talk to a thousand people a month, it would be more effective to use a platform like this because now they have access to the data. All they have to do is place the phone calls. Whereas getting these phone numbers, might become a bit of a task, a hard task, if you don't have access to this database. So yes, and the third way, which is the traditional way, when it comes to outbound, use a few of your connections. If you are a bit older and you've worked a bit, I'm sure you have a few connections in banks, you have a few connections in insurance companies, talk to the connections that you have and say, you know what, I want a meeting with so-and-so. Um, can you please get me in touch? It's also equally as effective. Like I said, this tends to work a whole lot more effectively when you're dealing with larger corporations. If you're dealing with large corporations, there's no amount of ads that is going to be able to get you that decision makers unless you have so much money. So I would rather you use this other alternative route and go and try and gather these leads the money way because you will get to 50 people much faster by doing direct sales than you would get by running ads especially in the African region, because some of these social media networks don't, people don't go to them. Even if you wanted to say the, the general manager of uh, one of the large entities here, they may not even be using LinkedIn. So even if you run ads inside LinkedIn, it's not going to be as, as effective because the people just aren't there. So sometimes it may make a lot more sense to kind of go the traditional route and either get their contacts inside Monkey Pesa or get them the traditional route and just directly reach out, get the meeting scheduled and have those conversations. Yes, um, and now one final thing, when you're in the world of B2B sales, there's only one thing that causes failure. One thing why most people are failing at B2B sales is because of what they call follow-up. Now, the normal B2B sale takes about eight weeks, eight weeks in order to get a, a sale. That is when you're selling to a large corporation. Usually it takes between eight weeks and six months to get that sale. Now, because most people don't understand that, they will come and pitch initially and think that, I pitched, so probably I'm going to wait for feedback. But let me just give you context of how this works. As an example, if you are selling a sales software, the first thing is you're going to do is you're going to sell, you're going to pitch to the sales manager. Now, when you're pitching to the sales manager, when you're pitching to the sales manager, in week number two, he's probably going to engage his CEO. After week number two of him engaging his CEO, Step number three is the CEO, you've had the meeting, they've liked whatever you're doing, they might need to engage their finance team. After you, they've engaged their finance team to make sure the budget is available, they may need you to train their team. So you need to understand that it, it usually takes a bit of time. It takes a bit of time. You don't just dive in today and automatically expect that the sale is going to be made in the next two weeks. Now, the trick is you have to get intentional about that follow-up process. You need to know that because it's going to take me eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks to get this sale, what do I need to do in week one? How do I follow up in week two? I don't want to also overwhelm the person, my point of contact. So how do I mix it up so that once in a while I'm talking about something else, I'm giving them some kind of resource. So create a plan over this eight week period so that number one, you're also held accountable and you know that this every week I need to check in just so that you stay top, on, top of mind of this person that you're trying to sell to. Otherwise you coming and pitching once, and you do the pitch, and after that, forget about the, this and wait for their feedback. They also get busy. They have work. Their children get sick. They have issues going on. So you, they could actually forget this entire process, and you fail to get that sell. So it's important 
important that you have some kind of CRM in place because the CRM is what is going to prompt you, keep reminding you, do you know what? Um, you need to check on this person. This week, you had promised that you're going to check on this week. If you use the monkey piece of CRM specifically, it's going to even send you text reminders of, yes, you checked on this person last week, but this week you're supposed to remind them about this and that and that. Um, after a week, it will still send in further reminders of, do you know what? This is what you need to do in regards to this cell. And where most people get it wrong is when you're managing scale, managing cells for survival is a whole lot different from managing cells for scale. If you're talking to 20 people a month, then you don't need a CRM. But if you want to get 50, 100 cells, then you're going to need a software because you're going to need to talk to 1,000 people and remembering what everyone needs and when to follow up and how to follow up and what to say without a system gets so much of a job that it might be impossible for you to do. I mean, if, if, say, for example, I've talked to 50 people a day, in a week, those are 250. By the end of the month, those are 1,000 people. And whenever you're talking to this person, person number one is going to say, do you know what? Call me next month on 8th. Another person is like, hey, let's meet next week. Another person is like, no. Person number 62 is going to be like, ah, we don't have a budget for this yet, but give me a call in December. That's when our financial year starts. We're going to embed you in the budget. So because everyone is giving you a different call to action and a different way forward, without a system in place, you're never going to be able to scale the cells. That's why most people have 10, 20 cells. Uh, I was actually shocked that most people have about 17 cells. No one makes more than 17 cells, but it's because they don't have the system that can help them scale their cells. For you to get 50 cells, you need to talk to at least 500 people. Now, dealing with the logistics and coordination of 500 people, coordinating meetings, coordinating calls, coordinating tasks is an impossible task without a CRM software. So yes, um, in a nutshell, those are all the ways that you can use to acquire customers. And for those of you that have come in a bit late, uh, this video is going to be made available on YouTube. So you can as well follow up. With, it will show you a ton of the examples that you can use to I'm getting, I'm looking for B2B leads. Where should I start from? Who should I approach? How should I get them to me? How should I go out to them? So this whole video will give you all the context that you need to help in that regard. But yes, um, in a nutshell, that is it from um, us today. And uh, I'm going to give it a minute or two so that in case you have any questions, you can please feel free to share those in right now. And uh, I will be able to respond. If not, uh, over the next two minutes, it will automatically get to a close. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so I see some people have sent some bonuses on TikTok. I appreciate that. To Voja Pijaka, I don't know where that is from, but uh, thank you so much. I also see a question of can I use can I use Facebook? Yes, Facebook is good for B2B. Uh, that's Facebook ads, I imagine. But if you were to rank, Facebook comes last. The first platform you use is uh, preferably LinkedIn ads because of how specific. Remember, you're in the world of B2B, so you're trying to reach decision makers. So getting to decision makers is expensive. Even these social media networks know that it is expensive. So get to understand that. Because of that, dedicate money to LinkedIn first, then ads number two, then number three, Facebook ads, which but Facebook ads only do so if you have an existent list of customers you already have. And, intentionally let Facebook know that these are the kinds of customers that I'm looking for. If you don't do it that way, then you won't get as much value. Okay, so I see another message right here on TikTok. Uh, someone is saying they're grateful. Um, I appreciate that. And if you need any help in regards with sales, uh, honestly, always feel free to help. I'm intentional about helping people increase their sales, increase their marketing, as long as, of course, they're using our softwares. So yes, um, someone is asking, how can we improve on our TikTok accounts? Um, when it comes to TikTok accounts, it's about one thing, consistency. Just to give you context, personally, I'm not a follower, a huge follower on, on the number of people who are following you. I'm mostly interested in how many leads, meaning how many messages am I getting in a month? 
So I started my TikTok journey about eight weeks ago. And in those eight weeks, number one, I have grown to 8,000 followers. And of those followers, uh, I usually get about 20 to 30 messages now. But that's in a period of two, that's 20 to 30 messages a week. So if you trace cross that through the month, those are about 80 leads that come in on grounds of uh, these TikTok accounts. But this has stemmed from one thing, just being consistent where you're posting every single day, number one. And number two, telling people that hey, you can reach me, intentionally telling people, that, you know what, this is what I do, you can reach out to me. This is what I do, you can reach out to me. It tends to be the most effective in comparison to anything else. Huh? So um, most importantly, uh, don't talk about, just be consistent, uh, number one, and give people the call to actions that they need. That is, that is, all, that, that is all that works. Huh? Uh, so someone else is asking, talk about how to improve on sales for money. Money lenders with a capital base of 20M. Um, the, the thing about increasing sales is, it's about one thing, just get more people using your infrastructure. So if you're a money lender, for example, that's even the easiest service to sell. Just go to TikTok and say, I lend money. Go to your WhatsApp, tell people I lend money. And you see how many more messages are going to come directly to you. So um, just about people give, being aware that uh, you're providing that as a service. And ultimately, that is what drives more conversion to, to you as a brand. Yes. Um, it depends. If, Like I said, some channels are inbound, other channels are outbound. So it's dependent on your business. For your sake, given that uh, you have money and money is a product that everyone needs all the time. I would recommend you do the inbound in inbound channel. Go, get out to TikTok every day and tell people, I do not, I lend money. If you have this, this, reach out to me, reach out to me. Even just within two weeks, you're going to see over 50 people reaching out to you. That would be my 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 take about it. Yes. Okay, guys, I have one more minute. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them. Um, by the way, after this, you can still drop me a DM. We can have a chat in person so that I advise you much better, much faster. Okay, so um, another question you've asked is how can I trust those clients who are outside of the clientele you know? So be like every other person. Whenever you've just established a new relationship, number one, don't give people lots of money. Number two, um, let them provide the securities. So slowly graduate. I'm not saying if you have 20M to lend, don't don't start by lending 1 million. Start by lending 200, 100K. So that way your risk is an exposure to the funds is not that much. And remember these people would have left securities at the end of the day. So yes, uh, trust is only earned and proved over time. You can't only depend on your network for business because your network is extremely small. So it means one way or another, you have to expound your network. But as you're expounding your network, still put in place of, you know what, for new people who we don't know, this is where we're going to start from. This is what our threshold is. Uh, talk about that initially as you're, as you're telling people that, you know what, we'll end up to 200K for the beginning. Then the more the person pays, then you increase the amount of money that you lend to them. Otherwise, depending on your client, your, your entire, your client network, it's too small that it's never going to make scalable business sense. I mean, even getting more than 50 customers is going to be an impossible task if you're depending exclusively on your network. Yes, you need more customers in order to expand. So ideally, you're turned between a rock and a hard place. Uh, so expand, get more network, build the trust. Then expand a bit further, get more network, build the trust like that and make it a recurring cycle. Okay, okay, guys, uh, I think uh, those are all the questions that I have so far. And for those that have been able to attend, I appreciate you and I thank you so much. This video is going to be made available on YouTube. And I also have a ton of other webinars. As an example, if you're looking for your faster 100 cells, we had a webinar that just talked about how do you realistically acquire your next 100 cells. So if you'd like that, simply just drop me a DM. I will be able to send that to you immediately. But for those that have come in, I thank you so much and bye-bye. Uh,